Hi, I'm Tim, and welcome back to Versus. Today, it's an all big brand battle as Omega and Rolex take the walk down the runway. It's Railmaster Denim versus Milgauss Z Blue. Blue Steel is the look. Versus starts now. The original Rolex Milgos bowed in 1956 as a watch for engineers and technicians who were required to work in watch warping proximity to powerful electromagnetic fields. In 2007, the Milgos returned from a hiatus dating back to 1988. The green sapphire GV variant shifted gear from quirky to downright psychedelic with the arrival of today's Z Blue model in 2014. Given its coincidence of zany dials, colored crystals, and the nameplate's stodgy origins as a technician's tool, the current generation of Milgauss has been an intriguing contradiction from day one. Nowhere is this more evident than in the contrast between Z Blue dial and case. If you were to cover the dial in crystal, the result would look like a minimalist, even formal timepiece of moderate dimensions. Compared to the rotating bezel and ceramic bezel Rolex sports models, the Milgauss looks like a case study in understatement. There are no crown guards, no squared off super case profile, no helium release valve or fusion of metal and zirconium dioxide. In fact, the tapered lugs, compound curvature, and fluid form of the Milgauss case evoke a scaled up date just or date eight rather than a scaled down Explorer II or Deep Sea. The conical bezel lacks both the bombast of Rolex's fluted gold units and the bravado of the calibrated sports rings. On the basis of case lines alone, there is nothing to betray the CERN levels of wattage bubbling within the confines of this stolid steel vessel. Rolex Switzerland exists within both the German Swiss world of Beale and the French Swiss environment of Geneva. This Melgaus case clearly embodies the spirit of the former. A Rolex Oyster bracelet matches the extreme anti-corrosive Rolex 904L steel composition of the stamped Melgaus case. A rare feature shared with the Milgauss's Air King body double is a tucked and minimalist solid end length that does not project beyond the lugs. Excellent fit on small wrists is the payoff. This is no entry-level bracelet either. The polished center links, polished center clasp, polished clasp internals, raised rather than stamped Rolex crown, and EasyLink 5mm adjustment system are reserved for top shelf Rolex models. The vertical trigger employs a fascinating hook and beak system with pivoting lock to achieve the security of trigger release without the visual encumbrance of triggers. From 2018's vantage point, it's hard to imagine how violently some pundits react to the 2007 Milgauss GV's combination of orange lightning bolt seconds hand and tinted crystal. The world of 2007 wasn't ready for the metallic maelstrom of the Z Blue. And here it is the most shocking single component that Rolex has ever made. Orange, green, blue, and what a blue. This is the kind of color that sears itself into your retina. It's the horological equivalent of staring down the wrong end of a laser pointer. Although the Z Blue rarely is ordered by Rolex buyers, I've noted that a shocking number of those who dare profess to have no standing interest in Rolex or express outright disdain for other watches in the Rolex collection. The Big Z is a stealth fighter in one sense. It might be Rolex's top conquest play for customers of less heralded, weirder, and smaller brands. More than crazy, the dial is well done and visually balanced. The absence of the date and Cyclops magnifier is dictated by a desire to fully enclose the movement in a soft iron anti-magnetic cage. Symmetry and elegance are the incidental result. Details are flawless. The applied white gold dial furniture is rich, and the nuclear iridescent blue color must have been a monstrous challenge to galvanize so evenly and vividly on the metallic sunburst base. Three cheers for Rolex's industrial might, because the Milgauss Z dial is a showcase for the like. Rolex fits its tried and true caliber 3131 to the Milgauss. It is literally, down to the hardware, the same anti-magnetic system used in the Air King. 
Automatic winding employs a jeweled staff rotor pivot, bi-directional action, and Teflon-coated reversing wheels to favor refinement above all. There is no rattle, there is no wobble. And while 48 hours of power reserve is pedestrian and rather unremarkable by contemporary standards, this one is all about slick action. Milgauss relevant tech includes the Niobium Zirconium Parachrom Blue Hairspring, soft iron cage enclosed on both sides, and a nickel phosphorus escapement that offer more than the stated resistance to 80,000 ampere per meter or 1,000 gauss, but the Omega still has the edge. The Omega Railmaster CK2914 launched in 1957 as an extension of the Seamaster water-resistant watch family. Periodically reborn and retired since that time, the current Seamaster Railmaster emerged at Basel World 2017, and today's denim model is a 2018 mid-year launch for summer. Just to clarify, the watch shown here isn't a variant of the 2017 Trilogy 1957 Railmaster. Today's watch is a member of the regular production Seamaster Railmaster family. And that's important because unlike the Trilogy, the regular production Omega Engineers watch preserves the brand's signature sports watch case bevels. Here, full satin finish is used to express both the Railmaster's entry-level status and its ostensible purity of purpose. And that purpose is to laugh at magnetic fields on the wrist of a technician, engineer, or one who frequents the proximity of high-powered electronics. This generation of the Railmaster technically stands as its own family within the labyrinthine Seamaster collection, but its no crown guard, fixed conical bezel, and slim case profile clearly derive most immediately from the 2017 Aquaterra revisions. While the case predates this dial, the combination of subdued steel in satin and denim dial appear to have been designed together. It's a perfect match. Twin triggers ensure that the double deployant clasp remains securely closed. A full satin three-link bracelet offers both solidity and excellent feel. Ventilation is superb. Pay $100 less and receive your Railmaster denim on a literal denim strap. I recommend it as an accessory even if you spring for the bracelet. While it is tempting to jump straight to a dial or movement comparison, do not underestimate the degree to which the contrasting reliance on high-polished and satin-grained steel establish the wildly differing personalities of the Milgauss Sea Blue and the Railmaster denim, respectively. While the Z Blue thrills with its surrealist glow, the denim dial of the Railmaster impresses with its nuance. Omega's use of color appeals at first glance and impresses under scrutiny. Accents of brown, silver, violet, bronze, navy blue, and cyan peek through the rusticated texture of the denim dial's vertical striations. If the effect was to emulate actual denim fabric as closely as possible, Omega hit the target dead center in the crosshairs. Speaking of which, the crosshair center dial, quarter Arabic numerals, and date-free countenance establish symmetry to rival the Milgauss. But the flat, vintage effect of flush printed features is at odds with the 3D dial of Rolex's Applied Index Milgauss. A throwback style railroad seconds track completes the picture on this Omega. This is the most polarizing quality of the Railmaster and its philosophical break with the Milgauss. The Omega is a retro styled nostalgia play, and the Milgauss strives for avant garde modern or even postmodern wrist presence. Loom on the Railmaster is excellent and distinctive on the Omega because its use of loomed seconds keeps the dial animated and all hands visible at night. Omega's exclusive ETA-designed caliber 8806 automatic is part of a recently launched built-from-scratch coaxial family designed to supplant the older ETA 2892 derived caliber 2500. In terms of Omega hierarchy, this movement sits beneath the 8900 and above the retiring caliber 2500. Here, a 55-hour power reserve is the standout feature, but technology and toughness are the worthy undercards. A silicon hairspring provides anti-magnetic resistance verging on amagnetic. The still magnificent George Daniels coaxial escapement remains the most exotic mechanism you can buy for under 50,000, and the full bridge free-sprung balance assembly ensures a level of toughness on par with a Rolex. 150 meter water resistance keeps the water out of the COSC certified Swiss chronometer that matches that cert with Meta's Swiss Federal Institute of Metrology 
full watch certification. Omega Railmaster Denim Advantages The Omega remains a true engineer's option. Virtual immunity to magnetism and an extra 50 meters of water resistance leave the Milgauss looking soft. By a narrow margin, the Omega boasts greater power reserve, but the coaxial caliber with silicon hairspring offers huge tech appeal and superiority. Completely amagnetic, the Railmaster is the greatest product placement opportunity Hollywood has yet to recognize. If you put only three hands on a sports watch, loom all three. Omega gets this, Rolex doesn't. With satin case and a dial as muted as denim, the Omega is a full-time watch that won't declare its branding, price, or presence on your wrist. For smaller wrists, the Railmaster is significantly thinner and shorter lug-to-lug. -lug. Rolex Milgauss Z-Blue Advantages Omega's bracelet is satisfactory, but Rolex's is superb. Easy link and wrist feel are the deciding factors. The Rolex costs more, but actual dollar depreciation for the Rolex and the Omega are almost equal. That's an argument for the Z-Blue's value. A Z-Blue represents more of an anti-Rolex statement than the Railmaster denim itself. This is a corporate self-critique that disavows every steel sub, GMT, and orthodox Daytona. Not another tribute or retro watch. Name a 1950s lightning bolt aside, the 116400 has the integrity of a fresh idea. The Z-Blue adds both risk and willingness to innovate. Individuality. The Z-Blue is like no other Rolex, no Omega, and nothing else currently on sale. Warranty. It's now five years against four years in Rolex's favor. Neither one of these watches remains entirely faithful to its origins as a rote tool of the technical trade. Omega's pop culture play with a jeans-inspired dial and Rolex's flight of fancy with the Dayglo Z-Blue need to be viewed as expressions of personal values and personality. The Railmaster looks like an aqua terra that's been pared down, calculated to capture a piece of the present vintage watch craze, and perhaps bring a few more ladies to the hobby via friendly proportions and playful apparel references. Rolex's Z-Blue is a strident and rebellious statement. It's Rolex, the most conservative brand of them all, showing a willingness to dare, to differ, and to fail. Built like a tank and brighter than a supernova, the Z-Blue doesn't just sear itself into my rods and cones, it's burned its image into my heart. More than price and practicality, that's exactly the quality we seek in a luxury watch.